Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to the channel and today I'm going to be attempting to recreate what is perhaps the worst attempt to make a helicopter that I've ever seen and it is known as the sky car and I'm going to tell you right now the word sky has no place in the name of this thing whatsoever. Let me show you why. Okay, so this thing was invented in the 1920s, well before the first helicopter, but after the Wright brothers, so flying was already a thing. Just not helicopter style flying. J just take a look at how this thing works and listen, listen to the narration as well. Here we go. This is a helicopter. It, it's not a helicopter. Invented by this ingenious gentleman. It, it's not genius. The idea being to make the machine rise straight upward. It, it doesn't rise straight upward. The idea is okay, but it doesn't seem to work. That's true. You got that right. Perhaps a little yeast would help it rise. Oh boy. They're really going with the puns back in the 1920s, are they? <laughs> the only thing to go up so far is his temper. So I don't know if the inventor had anything to do with this video. I don't know if he made this video to promote his own thing. I'm inclined to say that's not the case. And this is some third party just reporting on this crazy invention that this ingenious inventor created because they're not, they're not painting him in a good light here. They're just straight up making fun of his invention, which if he is responsible for this, more credit to him for being self-aware at least, but it, this isn't even over yet. Let's keep going. Anyway, he's getting some good exercise out of it. Oh, well, maybe it will rise with the next market. And that's it. The video just cuts right there. There's really no more context than that. So as you can see, didn't work. The footage definitely showed this thing was not lifting off the ground. At best, it was bouncing. It looks like a terrible experience for the driver, and I question how this was even meant to work in the first place. Here, I found another video called Sky Helicopter Outtakes, which is much higher quality, and it actually shows in much more detail how this thing was supposed to work. So uh, the audio is really important for this because listening to how this thing works kind of really shows what's going on here too. But if you look closely, you can see that there are these flaps that are j they're just dangling down. You can see them, they're flapping in the wind and as it moves. So as this piston goes up and down, erratically, these flaps on the upstroke open up, allowing the air to pass through this cone. And then on the downstroke, they actually flap up, closing off those gaps and then intending to catch the air as it pulls down. So it's essentially supposed to be grabbing the air and pulling it down. Now, the other weird thing about this is the whole thing rotates in a circle, you know, kind of like a helicopter, which makes sense for helicopter blades that are actually staying at an angle and pushing wind down. But this, this doesn't really do that in my opinion. And it's no different than taking a hollow cone and spinning it around. Like that's not going to deflect air because it essentially is creating a smooth surface that's just moving symmetrically through the air. It's not deflecting it. But anyway, watch this thing in action and listen to how it sounds when it's flapping. Flapping. I mean, it's kind of aesthetically pleasing even to the ears. All right, here we go. You ready for liftoff? We just need to bump up the engine a little bit more. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh no. Look at the wheel. Look at the... <laughs> I like how it just cuts to it bouncing in a completely different angle and one of the wheels... That's not looking good. All right, so there's other parts of this video that I want to highlight here because there's just there's just so much to point out about this thing. So it really the rotation of this thing really gets me because watch once this thing starts actually getting enough momentum to bounce, you can see that there's a counter torque. This thing is rotating in this direction because you're trying to spin this entire I don't know what you call this propeller. They call it a propeller sometimes and that just creates a counter torque. But the thing is, I'm no aerodynamics expert, but I really can't imagine a cone providing any lift while it spins. 
To me, the only way this could provide any lift while it's spinning around is if all of these flaps stayed rigid in this angled position to deflect the air downwards, but they don't do that. These are free floating flaps that'll flex right up and become essentially a flat surface, which is not going to deflect any air. So I'm pretty sure the spinning is only hurting this thing's ability to control itself. Speaking of controlling itself, what if you did get up in the air? Then what? I don't see any other mechanisms for control on this thing once this thing gets into the air. What's to prevent you from tipping over? How are you supposed to go forward once you're in the air? What's giving you any type of forward thrust? Like, wh what's the logic here? Did you think of past getting off the ground? <laughs> Mr. Genius Inventor. Okay, and then I just, I can't not point out the fact that this must be the most uncomfortable bumpy ride I've ever seen in a vehicle on flat ground. <laughs> look at the pilot. L look at what your experience is as you try to fly this thing. And I don't think this would get any smoother in the air because you're gonna be constantly catching and pulling yourself up through the air. That's just how this thing works. So yeah, basically, I'm having trouble imagining how this thing was ever meant to be successful. So I think it's time to try to replicate it. Are we up for some... Oh my goodness, this is the most violent one yet. <laughs> Are we up for some failure today? I'm up for some failure today. Let's jump into it. All right, this is going to be a challenging build that I'm not going to be able to replicate exactly as far as the physics goes because um, we're a lot more limited in this game than we are in real life when it comes to how we can build. So the funny thing about the sky car is not only did I never see it operate in the sky, but I never even saw it operate as a car. I mean, it had wheels and it was on the ground, but I never saw it drive. I don't even know if it had turning on the ground. Like, was this thing even a car at all? There are literally two words in the name of this thing, and I don't think either of those words apply to its actual function. This might be like the definition of false advertising. All right, so I think I got the basic programming down for um, at least this part of the vehicle, the main engine and piston, and look at this. Already, we've achieved the same level of functionality as the original. We didn't even have to put any propellers or any blades on top of this thing. It's already fully functional. There's essentially no difference between this and the original. I mean, if you're a results-oriented person, I've essentially already accomplished the goal here. All right, but of course, we're gonna take it farther than that, and this is where things are gonna get a lot more difficult building-wise. Because building a cone of wings is not really possible. So I'm gonna get as close as I can and hope for the best. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get more than this per side. <laughs> this is proving to be extremely difficult to get any functionality in such like a a conical shape because I need this steering hinge right here in order to enable these each one of these flaps to be able to flap essentially and catch wind as it goes up and down I also need all of these steering hinges so I can angle them away from each other and angle them down in a cone shape I don't have any space building a cone in trail makers is not easy so I'm just gonna go with I'm just gonna run with this and see what happens it'll be better than Wait, I was gonna say it would be better than nothing, but with nothing, we were already at the end result. <laughs> so this could actually be worse than nothing. Okay, this actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to once I put them all around here. Okay, it's not fully programmed yet. I just have the up and down, not the spinning, but let's see what happens. You know what, we're already, it actually improved it. We're already more successful. We can get up in the air for like a couple of flaps. I think I need more articulation. I think I need more up and down movement. So I'm going to add another set of pistons. All right, there's no way this could go wrong, right? Oh yeah, there we go. We don't have our counter torque going on yet. So I need to go ahead and power this thing. All right, you ready? There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> this is so stupid. You know, I'm really surprised at how much it's able to kind of get up into the air at first. And you can't really see it. Um, I'm actually going to enable a mod that allows me to go into slow motion. Uh, the time mod has been updated with a slow motion feature. All right, so I'm going to go at 30% speed here and watch the flaps. You can see when it goes up, I mean, it tries to. It's just... <laughs> they're flapping. But I don't have the ability to lock their movement on, like, the cone plane. I'm gonna adjust the timings of these things and see what happens. Whoa, whoa, hold on, let's go full speed here. I actually like, I felt like I was going up a little bit. Look at that, that's, 
Okay, as we go faster, it actually seems to almost kind of work a little bit more. I'm gonna switch this out for a helicopter servo and see if that changes things. I think helicopter servos have way more torques. This is, I'm probably gonna regret this. Okay, I regret this. I definitely regret this now. <laughs> Let's not use that. All right, so for aesthetics sake, I'm adding the uh, engine cover thing that's kind of on the front side. And I also put some weight on the front to try to equalize our weight a little bit. I mean, everything back then was in black and white. So I'm just gonna make this a grayscale <laughs> build here. Okay, so this is what we got so far. It's looking decent. We actually get some air. So yeah, let's slap a regular engine. Let's, let's make this thing a little bit more functional than the original, at least for now. I'm going to slap a real engine to this thing, and I'm going to give it some steering. So now, the original version may not have been really a car, unlike its advertising claimed, but at least we are. And what this allows us to do is drive off a cliff and try this thing out. <laughs> All right, what better place to test out an early helicopter than from a helipad? Oh, oh hold on. All right, here goes nothing. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's as bad as that it is as it is everything else All right and come on off there we go all right and we're off we are off we're flying this is the sky car i've done more sky and car than the original could have ever hoped for <laughs> oh no <laughs> look at this thing is it a i mean it's almost a parachute what happens if i don't do anything okay it's really hard to tell if it's having, if it, if it's really making any difference, if the mechanical motions are actually doing anything, I don't really know. All right, I got an idea. I'm gonna try to actually add an angle stopper on these things to prevent them from flexing up more than they're horizontal. Okay, this is probably a bad idea, but I put this wedge piece right above this. So this is the uh, steering hinge that flexes and allows the wing to, you know, flap up and down, but now it shouldn't be able to flex past hitting this thing. As those words come out of my mouth, I just realized I'm just saying, let's add more collisions and hope that makes things better, which that does not make sense in this game. All right, let's activate slow-mo and see if these things serve their intended purpose. Oh, they actually do serve the intended purpose really well. Look at them stop. Here, let's go even, we can go even slower, Mo. Let's go 10% speed. There we go. So you can see them flap down and then they stop as it hits the wedge. But is that going to help us? I mean, oh no, there's the collisions in fast motion or regular motion rather. Okay, I got another modification I want to make. Can I attach large? Ooh, there's just barely enough room to attach these large wings. Yeah, we're gonna give this thing more wings. This is gonna cover more area and hopefully result in more lift. Usually that would make sense, but with this creation, I just, nothing really makes sense. Let's see how this looks. Hey, it's, I don't know. All right, well, let's try it. Okay, okay, okay. That's, I don't know what, I don't know what that was. Let's slow down. Let's see what's happening here. Wow. That is actually working as it's supposed to. The results are also as expected, like it doesn't work. <laughs> but the fact that they're able to flap up and down like that, I'm actually gonna strengthen the hinges a little bit. They're, flap they're flopping a little bit too much. But I'm actually really impressed that I was able to get the original uh, functionality of the blades. All right, I raised the strength by just a little bit. Let's see how they look now. Maybe too strong. Oh, we're still going up though. We're still going up. We've leveled off. And we're starting to lose altitude. That was more promising. That was actually way more promising. Look at that. Whoa, this is cool. Okay, hold on. Here's full speed. We're getting better. I think it's just a matter of finding that strength, dialing the right strength for these hinges to allow these uh, blades to flap. All right, let's see what happens now. Oh, oh, we're flying kind of. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to make this much progress. It still doesn't work. Like that's still the end result, but it doesn't work less bad. <laughs> like look at how much we can stay up in the air now before we actually come back down. It's kind of amazing. Okay, I really don't know what I expect to, this to change, but I'm gonna bump up the speed of this turning servo.
That actually, I felt like I did better that time. That's kind of crazy. All right, I need to watch this in some slow-mo now. Here we go. What are we looking at here for the flapping motion? I still like it, I, could, I still feel like it could go a little bit weaker. They're not flapping down quite as much, which means they are catching more air than I want it to as it as it pistons upwards. But it still is not bad. It still is not bad. This is so cool. I'm I'm really happy for the slow motion thing. It's so much easier to see and understand what's happening with creations that are supposed to be working really fast. All right, let's go down to 1.5 strength. Let's see how this looks. Okay. It's definitely letting more. All right, what's fast speed looking like? It's not bad. This is, this is, I mean, it is bad. It's like, it's absolutely terrible when you think about its intended function. But comparing this to the original, we're doing so good right now. You know there's something wrong with your invention when you see performance like this, and you're like, this is amazing. We're doing so much better than expected. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a little experiment here and add these powered tail fins onto the tips of these blades. Oh no, it is so, now it's too weak. It is way too weak now. No, this is definitely worse. It worked better with just the wing pieces, actually. Nope. Helicopter blades aren't that great. All right, I'm trying to put sails on this thing, but they do not fit with each other. They, they're, they're, their attachment points are too wide apart, and I can't fit them on here. Okay, I've tried to make adjustments and fine-tune things here and there, but I have not gotten a better performance than this right here. Like, this, I think, is peak performance for the way that this thing is designed. I don't think the inventor could have expected anything better than this, and this is already way better, and also way more dangerous than anything he ever accomplished. Like, he did not, I don't think he would have wanted to get this far, because if he did, he may not have made it back. All right, let's see if I can actually take off and go over this wall. <gasps> oh no, it's upside down. So yeah, this thing tends to want to be upside down when it free falls, which doesn't work for measuring the speed because it's literally designed to catch and pull the air. So it's actually pulling itself faster than if it was to just do nothing. So unless I take off perfectly straight, I really don't have any chance at like staying level. I mean, I can jump over the wall, which is cool, but look, it just naturally is predisposed to, uh, yeah, angle itself perfectly downwards. And yeah, you see, if I don't do anything, we free fall like a parachute. But if I start actually trying to catch the air, we start going way, way faster because it works. It actually works to catch the air, but it's just upside down is the problem. I mean, I can try adding a bunch more weight to the bottom of this thing and see what happens as like one last ditch effort, but now we just can't fly as easy. Let's see if it at least keeps us upright more. I really don't think it's going to though. No, and we flip over just like that. But you know what? This might just be about the best sky car I've ever seen. And you know what? Thanks to the or ingenious inventor, uh, John W. Pitts, we have this video to thank him for. Hey, look, well, this is a good flight. That was actually really good. That was the best flight yet. That was amazing. I think mean, it's a great way to end it. If you guys enjoyed this, uh, this video on recreating real life machines, you might enjoy this playlist on the end screen right here. Keep those suggestions for other crazy inventions that you like to see recreated on the channel. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.